Hi, in our last video we showed some ideas about how to visualize the data from a Power BI balance sheet as you can see here but we didn't exactly show how to build them. This video corrects that. We're going to build these visuals in Power BI uh, from the data here and to do that we're going to showcase a lot of Power BI techniques. We're going to do merge and append in the query editor. We'll build a calculated column and we're going to use the tree map, the waterfall, the matrix, the slice of visuals and we're also going to apply some conditional formatting. The data is available, it's on a link in the description so if you want to follow along just download the data and we'll get started. Let's have a look at the data. The data is in four tables, Excel tables, liabilities, assets, equity and structure. Let's have a look at the liabilities. What we've got is all the items in the liabilities section and the amounts for 2020 and 2021. That's data that I've scraped just from the PDF, from the uh, published PDF. I've added a couple of columns here. The code column here is basically um, a code just to keep these in order otherwise Power BI wouldn't know how to order them. I've m mentioned the fact that these are all liabilities and I've also provided a kind of short name equivalent. The names on the items are very long uh, that often doesn't work when it comes to visualizing the data as the axis of a bar chart for example so I've shortened the names. We've got liabilities, we've got the same for assets, we've got the same for equity and then we've got a small table, basically what's that saying is equity and liabilities roll up together as it stands alone. Let's bring our data into Power BI. I'm going to connect to the Excel workbook and I'm going to click on the four Excel tables that we need. We can bring them in all at once. I'll load them into the query editor. Now we can see the data, assets, equity, liability section and our structure. What we need to do is to combine these all into one table and the first step is to append our assets and equity and liabilities table. We can stack them one on top of each other. We can do that because they've got exactly the same column names and column order. Let's append the queries as new and we want to append three or more tables and it's assets, equity and liabilities. The three of those, not assets twice, let's move that one out and let's just say OK. We've got a new table here, um, let's call it items and it basically has all the rows combined of the equity, liabilities and assets table. Now we're going to merge our structure table with our newly created items table to make our single balance sheet. I'll come to merge queries as new. I'll choose the items as a second table. I'll use the class as the common column. I know my data is perfect so I'm going to use an inner join and I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to come and take this expanded table. I don't want to use the original column prefix. I don't need my class column in twice and I'll click on OK. And now I've got a table which is my balance sheet which we can use for our visuals. There's one final thing that we have to do before we leave the query editor. We only want this balance sheet table. The rest of the queries are working tables. We don't need to see them in that Power BI report pane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each table one by one and uncheck enable load. I'll just pause the recording while I do that. And now that we can see all our tables apart from the balance sheet are in italics, that means they won't be loaded into the Power BI data model. I can simply now close and apply and start building my first visual, which is going to be uh, to reproduce the balance sheet and so that we can reconcile the data. We're going to use a matrix visual. I click on that and then I'll click on the two values, the 2020 and the 2021 values. And immediately a couple of things spring to mind. First of all, we need some thousand separators in these. Secondly, it would be nice to rename these columns. Let's do the first one. I'll go to the model pane. 
I click on my two fields and I'll just set the thousand separator there. And when we come back, we'll see that they're now a comma separated. I'll come into each of these and I'll rename the fields as well. I'll say we'll rename this to 2020 in pounds million and we're going to do the same for this other field as well. Okay, that's done. Let's start building our balance sheet. We'll start by putting on the group column that shows our two main sections um, and we can see that it balances. We don't need this total so we'll come to the formatting and we'll switch off the row subtotals. We'll come back here and we'll add our class into our group below into our rows below our group and we can see that equity and liability splits into its two components. Finally, we'll grab our item and put that underneath. And now if we have a look, and what we can do is we can expand all. Let's just expand all. We can see that we've got the basic structure of our balance sheet. Here's a quick reminder of what the original PDF balance sheet looked like. We'll do a couple of changes to make it a bit more like this. We'll as put as at 31st of December here and we'll put the totals, the subtotals below the items. And finally, we'll order, notice the items are in a particular order, we'll order those. So let's do a few things to make this matrix a bit more like that published PDF. The first is that it uses 2021 before 2020, let's just order those there. The second thing it says as of 31st December, let's just come into group and we'll rename that. Let's change the style so that we don't have that banded style. That will be useful later on when we come and do the conditional formatting. This uh, title here we can, we can change so that it is um, a orange background and a white text. Finally, let's add the same title as you had. We'll switch the title on. We'll give it a title. There we go. The only difference now is that these items are in alphabetical order rather than the kind of custom order they were in the original balance sheet. To fix that, we are going to go to our data pane and we are going to order our item by this this or this column, the code column that we have specifically set up for the purpose. While we're here as well, we'll also order the short name column because we'll use that on some of our visuals. We'll order the short name column. Again, we will sort it by the code. And we can in fact then actually actually hide our code because we're not going to need it in any of the visuals. So if we look at our balance sheet now, all the items are exactly in the original order which is great. The final final improvement is to switch our row totals on there we see and move them from the top to the bottom. The last thing that I have to do is get rid of this total here is the total of the assets plus the equity and the liabilities that makes no sense what we are going to do is to come over to our row subtotals and we're going to do it at per row level and the level that we want is as at 31st December this is the what originally called the group column and what we're going to do is we're going to switch off those subtotals and there that disappears now that we've reproduced this balance sheet as well as we can and been able to reconcile it with the original data it's time for us to try and enhance it I'll start off by duplicating this page and I'll rename the page to enhance balance sheet and well, let's add some data bars to those two columns so if I click on the visual and I go into cell elements I can choose the first column I'll add a data bar to it I'll switch it on and I'll choose to make the font uh, the background color a bit lighter so we can read the text underneath a bit more easily and I'll do the, exactly the same for the 2020 column as well. There we go. 
these data bars help us to see at a glance what are the material values in the assets for example its equity and debt securities. The main story however is going to be what has changed through the year and to do that we need to create a calculated column. I'll come and create a new column and I will call it change during the year in pounds millions and it is going to be my 2021 number minus my 2020 number. Let's tick that off and we'll see the calculated column in our field list on the right hand side. There you go. Let's add this column to our visual and this time we'll actually choose a different sort of conditional fo formatting. We'll choose background colors so I'll switch those on and then I'll go and configure it. By default it gives us this kind of blue scale but maybe what I want to do, I'm quite happy with the gradient, there are other options available but what I'll say is I'll add a middle colour, I'll choose my negative values to be a red, I'll, for my middle value I'll choose a custom value of zero, so that, and I'll choose that to be a white, so that negative numbers are red, positive numbers are blue, that looks good, I'll click OK. And I can easily check, see the kind of material changes. For example, reinsurance assets have, have gone down a great deal. Equity securities have increased. The last thing I'll do here is just uh, give that, add, a, add a comma to give that a thousand separator. That looks better. Let's build a waterfall chart to show the changes during the year. I'll click on the waterfall item. Visual, I'll position it. I'll add our change during the year to the y-axis and our item to the category. In fact, not our item, what I'll do is I'll actually use the short name. Uh, that'll be better, that we can see, much shorter, so better on the, uh, as a label on the x-axis. I'll make a bit of space there so that I can put a slicer. It doesn't really make sense to have a waterfall looking at all three sections. We just want to look at one section at a time, and so I'll put the uh, the class column into the field. I'll make that into a horizontal. That looks will look a bit nicer and it makes sense just to have a look at one of the sections at the time, one of the class at the time. So I'll switch single select on and that's so far so good. The final thing I'll do is I will order it by uh, change during the year. So on the left hand side we can see those that contributed most and those that detracted most on the right hand side and compare that to the blue uh, net change position. I have chosen a waterfall. I could have come along and instead have chosen a, a column chart or even a, a bar chart but I think that the waterfall is in this particular case the best visual for it. Now let's build a tree map to show the relative sizes of assets liability equity at the end of 2021. I've clicked on the tree map visual, I've made it big, I'll add the 2021 value to the values and I will, the item will be the details but I'll also group it by my group. So that splits it into the assets liabilities actually by my class so I can see the equities as well. Uh, switch on the data labels and I may well want to go in and change the colors maybe make this a slightly different color to be more distinct from those there we go a couple of improvements we can make rather than using the item the long name let's replace that with the short name that makes it much easier to read all of these secondly as we hover over we get the tooltip but we might want to see more information in the tooltip. So if we just come over here, here's the tooltips. We can add maybe the 2020 value and the change during the year to that. And if we hover over a tooltip there, we can see those information. Let's create a custom tooltip rather than customizing the standard tooltip. I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to rename it to uh, item tooltip. And this page is going to be our tooltip. So I'm going to come along to page information and I'm going to switch on 
allow user tooltip and then I'll make it a tooltip size and there we have our tooltip let's just put one thing on it before we wire it up and I'll come along and I'll put a card visual on it I'll size it so it's like the title up here I will add the item name onto the, onto the tooltip just drag that in there and we'll need to come along and make that smaller we can get rid of the label the label is the thing that simply says first item we don't need that and I'll go to the callout value and make that much smaller and let's say put it up there like that maybe it's over two lines and we'll also set the background so that it's uh, a different color to indicate that it's a title there we go let's now wire up our tooltip to our tree map if I go back to the tree map page and select the tree map I go to the format panel and tooltips are a general feature so I'll expand the tooltip section and I'll choose item tooltip and if we hover over one of these we can see that the tooltip is working the final thing that we want to do back on our tooltip page is we can actually hide that tooltip page that means from the Power BI service uh, users can't navigate to the tooltip page directly from the left hand side menu that would be there um, we only want to see this tooltip when we are hovering over the tree map here the final thing to do is to make our tooltip a bit more useful simply by adding a few more visuals to it the tooltip page is a page like any other we can add any visual that we like in this case I'll just add another card for example to show the 2021 values I'll add the 2021 value to the card and then I'll make just a few changes to um, again reduce the callout value in this case we will keep the, the label 2021 in millions we will keep the category label and what I'll simply do is come to the callout value and I don't want auto I'll just say exactly how many millions we've got there I'll pause the recording there while I add other cards and now I've added the 2020 value and the change during the year a couple of other tiny improvements first of all what we can do is we can change the size of the tooltip now we don't need all that size so I can come into the page information and rather than uh, having the tooltip I can change that to custom and then resize it finally we might want this change during year value to be uh, red if it's negative so we can click on our card go to the call out value we can obviously choose a color but that will be color for both positive and negative so let's click on this function button here instead of jet gradient choose rules and let's have a rule if the value is less than we've min and less than zero that's fine let's give it a, a blue value otherwise we'll add a row rule if it's greater than zero and it's less than max that's good then we'll add it as a red actually it's the other way around of course isn't it so let's me make that a red and make me make that a blue let's click on that therefore we here yeah, now we can see that that's in red and let's have a look at it on our tree map see if we've got if so we hover over one of these we can read exactly what it is and then have a look at the other details here is the final version of our report I've published it to the Power BI service we can see the four pages that we built uh, reproducing our balance sheet improving it with our conditional formatting building a waterfall chart so we can see the assets and liabilities and finally our 2021 composition map and with our tooltip I hope that you've enjoyed this video please do remember to subscribe and thank you for watching